Are you newly pregnant and have no idea if what you're experiencing is actually normal? Or are you planning to hopefully become pregnant in the near future and are trying to prepare yourself so you know almost exactly what to expect in your first trimester? Then keep on watching this video. Hey guys, it's Amanda from the intuitivewife.com and in today's video, this is my first ever video where I am going to talk about pregnancy because, surprise, I'm pregnant. So I thought it would be helpful to share with you what the hell happens during the first trimester because I really didn't know. People would try to warn me. They would say a few things like, oh, that morning sickness but I had no freaking idea. So this video is to help you hopefully mentally prepare yourself. So let's first talk about this whole nausea slash morning sickness thing that everyone talks about. Uh, first of all, it sucks, it's crap. Of course, everybody's different, every pregnancy is different. That's gonna be my little disclaimer. This is just what my own experience has been like over the past few months. So from the very beginning, I was physically ill basically 24 seven. If my eyes were open, I was nauseous. If you are hungry, you're nauseous. If you're tired, you're nauseous. If you have a nap, you're nauseous. If you eat too much, you're nauseous. I was also unable to hold down basically all food. So there were some days where I would throw up like once or twice, maybe three times a day, and other times where it was like four, five, six times a day. One to twice, sometimes three times, is considered to be normal. Four, five, six times a day or more, especially consecutively, is where you need to start not necessarily worrying, but paying attention to additional symptoms because you could be actually, um, your body will now start being dehydrated potentially, especially if you can't retain any fluids. So just be on the lookout for that. A little nausea, a little vomiting, not such a big deal. Hardcore vomiting could be a little bit of a red flag for you where you would need to talk to your nurse or doctor or potentially even go to the hospital for some IV so that you are no longer dehydrated. For me, in addition to the wonderful nausea <laughs> and being physically ill was actually motion sickness. I could not watch TV maybe an hour-ish Maybe I could squeeze in two episodes if I was really lucky. I basically couldn't watch TV. I could only spend maybe 10, 15 minutes or so on Instagram or Pinterest because of all the scrolling and there's so much moving moving pieces. Like I just, I couldn't deal. So I spent a lot of time reading books, just hanging out, sometimes staring at the wall because <laughs> that is how miserable I felt. <laughs> but um, I did not know that motion sickness is a potential symptom of your first trimester. So, fun fact. You have probably heard that in your first trimester you are very tired. I've heard some people refer to it as they're basically sucking the life out of you. Um, yeah, that that's very true. You're tired physically because you just, well, I mean, you're growing a baby, but like I would go to bed 8.30ish and fall asleep and I would wake up somewhere between 7.30 or 8 whenever my dog woke me up to tell me it was time for breakfast. And on some of those days, I still didn't feel like I got enough sleep. I would actually take my laptop onto the couch and read through some emails and I would either stretch out and take a nap or literally nod off and fall asleep while I was reading and responding to emails. Like by 10, 10.30. So I'd only been awake for about two or so hours before I would fall back to sleep again because I was exhausted. So be prepared for that. Also, um, really anything that required movement. <laughs> so uh, standing in the kitchen or wherever for about five minutes, I was good. 10 was pushing my luck. Anything other than that, I literally felt like I was going to either fall over or faint. So not a whole lot of movement happened in the first trimester. Um, even just trying to walk my dog around the block, which is maybe a 10 minute walk, um, was exhausting. I'd be three quarters of the way through and be like, oh my God, I'm so far away from the house. I don't know if I'm gonna make it. I might need to sit on the curb and take a break. When people say that the first trimester is a lot, it's a lot. <laughs> 
Um, but on the plus side, I will be making another video with tips for you on how to hopefully survive your first trimester because it really is, in theory, just a very short period of time. Although it feels some days like it is lasting forever. Um, food aversions, they are a real thing. So in the very beginning, I just wanted to amp up my spinach intake. I don't hate spinach, I don't love spinach, it's there, I'll eat it, no big deal. We had some in the house and I'm like, oh, I really want spinach. So maybe for about a week and a half, I was throwing in some extra spinach. Maybe it had to do with the folic acid. Is it folic acid that's in spinach? Doesn't matter. Anyway, I was really trying to amp up on my spinach and I'm like, this is great. I'm gonna be eating so healthy during my pregnancy. Look at all this extra spinach that I'm eating. By about my fourth or fifth week into my first trimester, um, spinach literally repulsed me. I couldn't look at it. I couldn't smell it. I didn't even want it in the fridge. Don't even suggest it as an item to put on my plate for any meal. It like, it, it's disgusting. It was literally like, a switch just went off from mm, spinach this is good to oh my god i'm going to throw up if i need to see one more spinach leaf like it. <laughs> um same thing happened with eggs which apparently is very common fyi um during pregnancy to have kind of like a weird relationship with eggs also i am now well into my second trimester and chicken is just weird fried or breaded it's delicious Give me a boneless, skinless chicken breast or a rotisserie chicken and I really have to force myself to eat it. But once the first trimester is over, food becomes a whole lot easier to manage. Also smells. It doesn't completely disappear, but that whole smell sensitivity, that's also a very real thing. There were days where um, I couldn't even walk into my kitchen. I could not be anywhere near the garbage can. I could always tell, without even looking at the calendar, I could always tell how close we were getting to garbage day because obviously the garbage would pile up more and in turn, at least according to my nose, would start to smell more. So there was actually a day where <laughs> um, my when my husband got home, I told him he needed to empty the garbage and clean out the sink because I can't even walk into the kitchen. It it is literally disgusting and it makes me gag just getting in the vicinity. I am still sensitive to smells. It's not nearly as bad, um, but just be prepared for potentially gagging. Like there, <laughs> part of me is kind of happy that we were still in the middle of COVID because there were days where I literally had to wear a mask to walk into the kitchen just to make breakfast or grab myself a quick lunch because I couldn't, I it was the only thing I could think of to try and block off, block out as many smells as possible. Just like get in there, power through, put on a shield and like run out of the room. That's my life. One thing that I experienced that I had literally never heard of before <laughs> in my life um, was sensitivity to temperature. And by that, I mean going outside. First trimester was winter. Um, going outside in the cold and then coming back into the house would immediately make me throw up. Um, the windier it was, the worse it was. There were days where it's, I don't know, 30 steps or so to get from the door to my car. If it was really windy outside, I would get into my car and literally just start dry heaving because the wind was making me nauseous for no real reason. Um, I actually still to this day walk around with a plastic bag inside the pocket of my jacket because I have no idea when or if <laughs> temperature or wind will strike and make me start dry heaving. So yeah, that that was interesting, although someone did tell me, I don't know, two weeks ago or so, that when they were pregnant, they, <laughs> um, the smell of cold weather would make them ill. So I felt a little bit better that I wasn't like a complete freak of nature, but I just thought I would share that because that was something I had never heard before, that hey, the cold will make you sick, like literally throw up. Just something to be aware of, just in case. I did mention earlier in the video about being tired. Something that does not help is the insomnia that also strikes. 
for me, mine basically started from the get-go. Um, I would always wake up between 1 and 3 a.m. every single day. And actually, the closer I got to my second trimester, the more likely I was to wake up at 3 a.m. and be famished. So <laughs> I actually have a little tiny bowl of food that I take with me to bed every night and put on my end table because even though now I'm not necessarily famished when I wake up at three in the morning, I'm still pretty hungry and I can't wait until seven or eight o'clock for breakfast because still, if I get hungry, I get nauseous. In the beginning, it was just a bowl of like crackers because my stomach couldn't handle anything. Now, a bowl of grapes or some strawberries or something. Some people talk about getting a itchy belly, um, especially close to or in the second trimester. Um, I have not experienced that, but I have experienced a sensitive stomach and not just in terms of eating foods, but like literally nothing could touch my stomach. When I'm hanging out at home, I usually have a pillow on my lap or like leaning on my stomach when I'm hanging out on the couch watching TV. That's just comfortable to me. In the first trimester, absolutely not. I couldn't have a pillow resting on my stomach. Some days I would actually be in bed and the the blankets would be resting on my stomach and I couldn't have them there. I would need to like whip off the blankets because it just made me feel so sick and so gross and sometimes claustrophobic that something was touching my stomach. It is not so bad now in the second trimester. I do still have some days where it's like, oh, this feels kind of ick. What has carried into the second trimester is the sensitivity in terms of touching it. So something about being pregnant, <laughs> people are like, oh my God. And they like come at you hands first to like grab your belly. My belly doesn't like to be touched. So I have to um, very nicely. <laughs> back people away from my stomach. If they wanna like touch it, just like rest their hand or maybe like a little like, hi baby, that's okay. But to like go to town as if you're like drying off a wet dog that just came out of the bathtub, my stomach can't handle it and you will make me nauseous. And one more thing, <laughs> because this list sometimes feels like it is endless, which actually is very common, first trimester, constipation and or gassiness. I could probably say flatulence to be nice, but I don't really filter very much. Um, that's a real thing. And some days you will be one and the other days you will be the other. Um, totally normal. If you can stomach it, try and take a probiotic just to keep everything working well in the tummy area. Also trying to make sure that you have proper foods that keep everything flowing well <laughs> in your digestive tract would also be helpful. If you're like me, you can literally only handle toast and crackers. So if you can't stomach it, you can't stomach it. I didn't find that it lasted very long. It would really, maybe three weeks, which feels like a lot when you are in like constant agony. <laughs> um, but it does go away. There's still some days in the second trimester where it's like, ugh, but it's not nearly, nearly as bad as the first trimester. And this is because your digestive system actually slows down during pregnancy. I don't remember the percentage. It's like 25 or 35% longer for your stomach to digest food. That apparently leads to either constipation or gassiness. Lucky us. Just in case we weren't already having a really great time <laughs> during the first trimester. So that is literally everything I can think of that I had experienced during the first trimester. I am going to continue to try and make some videos to share my experiences and or help you cope or maybe like this video hopefully helped you feel like less of a freak of nature if you are currently in your first trimester with all of these crazy symptoms. Please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. If you've been following me for a while, you know I don't really like to filter things and I like to normalize everything that I possibly can. People didn't really talk about chakras and Reiki and intuition a few years ago. I believe that they're part of us and need to be talked about on a regular basis. 
Pregnancy is no different. My experience so far has been that people don't really talk about the bad, the ugly, the weird. It's just like, oh my god, you're pregnant, that's so exciting. And like, it's a happy, happy moment, happy days every day for the next nine months. Obviously, it's great if you are feeling fantastic and loving your pregnancy and you're healthy and you're eating all these great, well-balanced meals, but I don't think that that's the norm. So I want to share as much as I possibly can about what happens in real life. Hopefully these videos will be helpful for you or at the very least entertaining where you can sit there and point and laugh at me at the terrible time that I have been having. <laughs> Just kidding, kind of, sort of. Anyways, catch you guys in the next video. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you over there.